Praise the Lord. So I want to introduce a couple of these men this morning, and then there's two of them, right? Just want to make sure. I... Sometimes I get them graduating before they're supposed to leave. So, and then when they come up, I want the families to go ahead and, uh, and come up with them if they would. I haven't done announcements yet, so he'll wait. He's learning patience right now. Okay, so on Eric Ellis and Juan Rodriguez, come on up, please. Which one of you guys want to go first? Go ahead, Ellis. <laughs> well, here we go. Okay. Okay. Uh, hey, good Sam. Um, thank you so much for your program, and uh, thank you for showing me how to be obedient to Jesus. Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a hug. <laughs> you guys. You guys don't know how hard that is for some people. You really don't. Some people that, if they've got anxiety problems and they don't want to get in front of people and they know, man, I, I, I want to praise the Lord, but I also don't want to pass out. And so, but he did well. You're a good man. Juan, come on up, my friend. You're up. I want to know what Jesus did for you. No pressure. No pressure. All right, if you guys wouldn't mind, can you uh, bow your heads and pray with me? <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for just being so faithful even when I was not. Thank you for bringing me here. Thank you for every breath that you've allowed me to have in this life that you've given me. Thank you, thank you Lord God, for all the family that is in this church. Everybody can honestly be upstage with me right now because this is all my family in Christ. These are all my brothers and sisters eternal and my parents in the Lord, and I'm humbled to even be up here. I pray and ask that you would loose my tongue, Lord Jesus, that you would have just grace and mercy on me as I am super nervous talking in front of people. Um, I am truly reborn because I used to love attention and I do not anymore. Jesus. So I thank you, Father, for just transforming my heart, for taking me who is dead and making me alive in you. Amen. And I ask that you would just give your message to this church right now, Lord God, help it to edify everybody. And you have all praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Praise him. All right, so real quick, is Sarah me? Rodriguez in here? Because I was praying that she would be here today. If she's not here, it's all good because I took notes. But I was praying for a miracle. That miracle didn't happen, not a big deal. I took notes just in case. <laughs> okay, so my wife is super mad at me right now still. Where's the camera at? Is it over there? All right, I love you and I'm sorry. That was weeks ago. Please stop being mad at me. All right, so anyway. Um, that really made her mad. Oh, no, seriously. That's going to go two ways. She's either going to roll her eyes and be like, ah, and be mad, or she's going to turn up that little corner of her mouth and smile, her pretty smile, you know what I mean? Oh. So it's going to go one of two ways for me, you know what I mean? So the grand gesture is something that my wife always talked about. And to me, I never really knew what that was, but I think that through Christ, the grand gesture is me having her not want to be with me right now because I was a real piece of garbage, man. And I still am pursuing her in love. I'm still fighting for my marriage. I'm not going to divorce her. She might want to do that for me, and I get it because I was a real dirtball. You guys have no idea how bad I was. I'm not going to go into details on that. Um, you ladies over here, I don't even know what y'all look like. Uh, I've made a point. I'm serious. I've made a point to keep my head down because I've learned my lesson, man. Most of what brought me here was adultery, and I was a serial cheater. So... Mm -hmm. To keep it G-rated, the sugar shack is what I was addicted to. And um, yeah, I couldn't stop, I couldn't behave myself, I couldn't do anything, I couldn't, I just couldn't stop sinning. And God brought me up to the point of almost dying on the 3rd of November, and I cried out and I said, hey, I've done this wrong, I've been a piece of garbage, if you allow me the chance to be the husband and father that I never was, 
that's what I'll do for the rest of my life. And he didn't kill me. So here I am just kind of trying to walk that out, having not seen any of the, the fruits of that, praise the Lord. But um, with all the pain that I go through, Christ allows me to be closer to him. That's all he uses it for. Right. And I can just tell anybody that's in this church that if they're in any sort of situation where they're in immorality or adultery or anything, stop now, dude. Like, stop now. I lost everything. I lost four children. I lost a Proverbs 31 wife. I almost lost my life. I lost all my stuff, dog, car, house, job, skills, everything. And that's because I wouldn't stop sinning, man. And Christ has been faithful to restore me, to take me from being an animal and make me a man that, you know, has honor and respect. Right on. All of you over here are my sisters in Christ. And, you know, it's my duty to protect you, first and foremost, from myself. And also to set a good example for these, you know, my Bon L. Fairway and, you know, Sunnyside boys. I love y'all. Um, you know, keep yourselves pure. You know, these ladies need you to be pure. We are the shields and protectors for them in the Lord. The Lord uses us to protect them. And that's what we need to be. And the only way to do that is to keep yourself pure, you know. And keeping yourself pure keeps you closer to the Lord. There is no other way to do it. You have to be pure. You have to, you know. It's no question. You have to do it. And, you know, I pray all the time that... I continue to be a spiritual covering and protector for my wife, that I be the husband that I never was. Um, I still pray for her, even though she doesn't like me or, you know, whatever. I don't know where she is. I don't know if she's safe, but I know that God's got her because I'm praying to him with my hand open that he protect her, that he just let her know how beautiful she really is. Let her know that there's a life that is better than the life that she has. You know, her and I would do a lot of uh, resetting where I would sin, and then she would be willing to forgive if we moved and changed apartments and changed jobs and changed neighbors and all this. And there never really was a permanent fix for that. It was always a temporary band-aid to like a jugular wound. Yeah. And this is the only reset. The only reset is Christ. That's, That's the right. only way you'll ever reset anything. Come on. Yeah. I mean, there's... Good job. You know, that's the only way that you really get a new life. You start over completely. You're a baby again. Like, I'm a baby right now, you know? And it's rad. I have a new name. I don't go by Johnny no more, because that was my party boy name. I go by my name, Juan Rodriguez. That's my name. That's my God-given name. And, you know, I wish I would have taken things that I said more seriously. Uh, there's power in what we say. And she always told me that. And I never listened, because I was stupid. I had, like, a habitual line-stepping problem. But, um... You know, what we say is powerful. You know, the very universe itself was spoken into existence by God, and he has given us a microscopic version of that power in what we say to people. We can create or destroy with what we say. Very good. So Very good. The, the biggest amount of abuse besides the adultery and stuff was I was verbally abusive, and it just cut my wife down, and it never really let her know uh, how beautiful she was, you know, how perfect she was to me, how much I loved her. She had no idea how much I cherished her because I never showed it. And, I mean, obviously I would take it all back if I could, but to be broken to pieces over and over and over again isn't a good testimony to how Christ has risen me from the dead and I have joy. And it doesn't seem fair that I have this much joy when I've lost everything, but that's kind of like the way it works, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Jesus just makes you happy all the time, and it's like, it's not fair, dude. It's not fair, but that's how God is. He's just super out of our mind. He's just insane. He just loves us and keeps pursuing us no matter how much we sin. You know, I was one of those people that the more I got to know him, the more it was like, wow, I continued to pluck hairs out of your beard. I continued to take you off the cross and hit you more and then put you back up on there. Yeah. Like I did a lot and I'm not worth the forgiveness that I've been given. I'm not. And I just try to live every day one step at a time. And he's holding my hand and he's got me and he's taught me how to be a better husband. He's taught me how to be a better father, you know, just by being kind to me, by being gentle with me, by just loving me unconditionally. And that's, you know, I mean, I kind of talk too much, so I apologize. I also have ADD really bad, so my notes are all, <laughs> my notes are like all over the place right now. Um, Welcome. Welcome, hmm. my friend. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know how it is. Yeah. But, I mean, as far as thanks, like giving thanks, how could I ever have failed, man, when I have this great cloud of witnesses like you in front of me, behind me, and with me? There's no way I could have failed because you guys are all so faithful in this church to just welcome me in. I was like this whipped dog that got here, you know, and you guys just loved me. You were patient with me. I almost had to lay a couple dudes out, but praise the Lord I didn't. And yeah, I just learned how to be meek. I learned how to restrain power. I learned how to, you know, care for females like widows and care for females like, you know, homeless people and stuff like that without wanting to get anything in return. I learned how to be just loving like Christ, and that's Amen. only because Christ loved me. Good and job. shout out to Mikey Savisky. I graduated. I love you. 
uh, Jason Jasinski, John Hawken, uh, Steve Hemming, Pastor Padula, everybody behind me, Dave Shaddix, all the boys in the houses. I mean, I could go on and on. I could go on for hours and just say thank you to everybody. I love you all. I mean, Connie got me these rad shoes. Like, look at these, man. These are baller. You know what I'm saying? And she did get me a tie and a shirt, but I would have been sweating bullets up here in that because I'm already pretty nervous. So um, all I can say is, you know, that Jesus has completely transformed me. And I mean, it's, it's mind blowing. I wish I could say the perfect thing right now to, you know, get my wife to stop being mad at me. But, you know, I do forgive her and love her. And if you guys wouldn't mind bowing your heads with me, we can all pray for her at the same time. And that'll be like the grand gesture, you know. So if you guys wouldn't mind closing your eyes and bowing with me right now. Thank you. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, for the wife that you've provided for me and the children that you've given me. You know, I was never grateful for them when I had them in my care. I did a horrible job, and I accept full responsibility for that. It was no one's fault but mine. And I just ask your forgiveness, and I thank you for them because you still have allowed me to have them in my life, even though they're not with me. I pray and I ask, Lord God, that you would open their eyes and heart to your word, that you would soften their eyes and their heart toward your word, Lord God, wash them over with your gospel of peace, wash them over with forgiveness, Lord God, and teach them what your love means. Help me, Lord God, to continue moving forward in you. Help me to be dedicated and faithful. Thank you, Lord God, for the relationship that you're restoring between you and I. Thank you that it is the only relationship that I'll ever truly need. Everything else is just a want. But as far as being a spiritual protecting and covering for my wife, I just pray and ask, Lord God, that you would help me to just do this, you know, completely with your strength inside me, that you would help me to set an example for the other men in this church, that if they stray and they are involved in morality or anything like that, it's only a matter of time before they lose everything. That's right. You know, That's it's right. only a matter of time. It's not, a, it's not a question of if, it's a matter of when. I pray and ask, Lord God, that you would help our sisters to be pure, that you would help them to see that you are the only man that they need, Lord Jesus. Everything else is a want that you would help them, Lord God, to serve you with all their hearts, that they would be Proverbs 31 women, Lord God, and that we could you know, continue to grow as a church body together. You know that every breath in my body is not mine, it's yours that you give me. I'm here willing to serve, Lord God, and I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would just miraculously bring my wife and children here as I'm going to step out in faith and plant myself in this church. So please, Lord God, open Sarah's eyes to your forgiveness. Open Sarah's eyes to how beautiful she is. Open Sarah's eyes to how I've been forgiven by you and I forgive her. Open Sarah's eyes, Lord God, to your peace, that there is only one way, one truth, and one life, and that is you. There is only one reset to her life completely, and that is you. you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Hey, Pam. Okay, gentlemen, come on up here. I'm going to pray for you. Congregation, if you'll stand with us really quick. This is the most important day right now. And... uh, Outside of their salvation, they're leaving this place. And uh, out there, the world hasn't changed much. In fact, the world's going to get worse. But you guys are changed. And God bless you. God bless you guys. And so, Father, I just ask in Jesus' name that you will bless these men, Lord God, to be missionaries, to go out, Lord God, and just live the life. So many of us, Lord God, uh, we, we practice talking a lot. Some don't have to talk a lot. Some just live it. Yes. And when they live it, other people see it. And when they see it, they understand that God is still good. He is still on the throne, and he's still doing miracles. Amen. So I ask that these two miracles right here, Lord, that have come into our presence, Lord God, and been put in our responsibility for a couple months, I pray that when they leave, Lord God, they'll go with your authority. Yes, Jesus. And you, Lord God, will stand them up, make them brave, make them courageous, alert, and clean, and honest, and I pray, Lord God, that their loyalty towards you, Lord God, would increase the responsibility for their families, for their wives, their children, their parents even. I pray that those responsibilities, Lord God, would not be slacked on at all. But I ask, Lord God, that you would give them the ability to be men, honest men, gentlemen, make a men of character. And we'll give you all the glory and the honor for it. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You're doing great. Keep it up.